just about every phone call I've received in the past few days has to do with who will be the next president. I think it will definitely be Ranil Vikramasinghe, or maybe not. In this video, I'm going to explain why this is a tough question. Up to now, Ranil and Dulles have both declared that they'll stand for election. Others, including Sajit and Field Marshal Fonseca, Patali, Champika, Ranavaka and Anurakumar Atisanayaka seem to be thinking about entering the fray as well. But regardless of how many candidates there are, there'll be multiple ballots until only two are left standing. And the winner will need a simple majority of 113 votes. Now, the Sri Lanka People's Freedom Alliance, that's to say, Port Tour, have 145 MPs, and it has already pledged its support to Ranil. So on the face of it, Ranil will be the next president. But last April, even before the Aragalea began, 42 MPs broke away from Porto and declared themselves independent. Their votes and probably other votes from Porto are now in play. So what about the opposition? The minority parties will almost certainly vote with Sajit. That gives the opposition about 80 votes, but that's still a long way from 113. Sajit needs another 33 MPs to cross over from Porto. And there is the rub. We must also remember that as Diana Gamage and Harin Fernando and Manusha Nanayakara have done already, more MPs from Sajit's SJB may be lured into Ranil's camp. The ballot is, after all, secret. It isn't a secret, however, that Ranil was appointed Prime Minister and hence Acting President to look after Gota's interests. After all, he did a pretty good job of that even during his last spell as Prime Minister from 2015 to 2019. If nothing else, the fact that Pohotua has now officially endorsed him is proof of this. This makes his brand toxic, not only to the Aragalea but to most of the people of Sri Lanka. After all, he possesses not only a lifetime history as a serial failure, but he's also seen as being out of touch and a member of Colombo's privileged urban elite. Worse still, at the last general election, barely two years ago, he secured just 2% of the vote in his own district. We can be sure that any Porto MPs who actually end up voting for him will be pinching their noses as they do so. So it would seem pretty straightforward that at least 33 MPs from Porto will cross over to support Sajid. But not so fast. If Sajid were to become president, he'll not be able to achieve any of his sweeping political and economic reforms unless he has substantial parliamentary support from the Porto MPs. Or else he risks, like D.B. Vijay Thunga, becoming a lame duck president, ruining his political prospects in the process. So he'll need to engineer a general election and probably also a presidential election as soon as he's elected. But none of the 145 Porto MPs, all of whom are tainted by Gota's dismal record, want a general election anytime soon. This makes it impossible for them to support Sajid for president as much as they might want to. So this creates the space for another candidate from Porto, one who can secure not only the trust and support of the 80 MPs in the opposition, but also break away 33 Porto MPs to support him. Enter Dallas Alahab Peruma, a gentle, likable soul who has also been careful to avoid being identified too closely with Gota and his toxic brand. True, Sajid has the support of the 80 opposition MPs, but the 33 Porto MPs that Dallas stands to attract will make Dallas not only the kingmaker, but also the king. Those 33 are unlikely to support Sajid on their own because they don't want a general election anytime soon. But under Dulles, they could not only defer a general election for the next three years, but also keep on attracting ever more defectors from Porto, creating a Porto light brand under Dulles's leadership. This means that even though he has the support of 80 MPs, Sajid will have to settle for being prime minister. 
he may be able to get Dallas to support his 21st Amendment and scrap the executive presidency, but somehow I doubt it. Dallas now holds all the cards. He needn't give anything away. More importantly, Dallas's low-key profile makes him an uncontroversial choice in the eyes of the Aragalia. They'll certainly not endorse him, or anyone else for that matter, but I think they will adopt a wait-and-see approach. What's more, in the eyes of the international community, the Dallas Sajid team will offer at least some months of political stability, a honeymoon long enough for a deal with the IMF to be signed, attracting bridging finance and the prospect of debt restructuring. Should Ranil be elected, however, the country will lurch straight back into strife. The Aragale will do all it can to get rid of him, and he will do all he can to stick on. As we all know, he's very good at doing that. He's, it's what he does best. The question then arises, can Dallas and Sajid lead Sri Lanka to an economic recovery? Hmm. I must admit I'm sceptical about that. I'm sceptical not so much because of any defect in the thinking skills of either of them, but because the people of Sri Lanka lack an appetite for the sacrifices, the bitter medicine, if you will, that must be swallowed to achieve real prosperity. Privatizing state-owned enterprises, closing down loss-making businesses such as Sri Lankan Airlines, halving the number of public holidays, slashing the cadre of the public service, halving the size of the armed forces, forcing the government to balance its budget, reforming labor law, and so on. I hold the view that our national predicament is not so much the result of corruption and the failure of political leadership, though goodness knows we've had enough of both those, but a sense of entitlement amongst our people. The idea that our prosperity must somehow come not from our own labor, but from other people, from donors, from foreign aid, and so on. This diao diao culture. And regardless of who becomes president next week, buckle up for a bumpy ride. More queues, more shortages, and spiraling inflation. I suspect inflation will touch 100% by Christmas. Anyway, if I had to bet money on who'd be the next president, my bet would be on Dulles, with Sajit as prime minister. And finally, although I'm an advisor to Sajit, I want you to know that the views I am expressing here are entirely my own. I've not discussed any of this with him, or for that matter, with any other member of parliament. So... Who are you betting on?